One in five suffer. Erase the stigma. Brain difference is not a crime. Mental health isn't just your problem. It's our problem. And now, Mental Health Monday with Marla and Dave. Welcome, Welcome to, to Mental, Mental Health, health Mondays. Mondays. Um, I am Marla and he is That Dave. would make me Dave. Yes, that's right. And I can tell you this, and I want to tell you this with, uh, with assurance. Every time you see us on Monday, we will, for the rest of time, be Marla and Dave. Yes, uh, I hope that never changes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, we want to let you know right up front uh, that Mental Health Mondays uh, needs your support. Uh, uh, you'll see on the screen below wherever you're watching this uh, a link to our GoFundMe page. We need you to help us bring this uh, great uh, information and entertainment and education. Um, that we bring with the great guests uh, that we uh, are honored to have on our show every week. And this week is no exception. Our guest is Francine Sumner. She is the founder and CEO of Kid in the Corner, an organization she started in response to the unfortunate passing of her son, Zach. And instead of giving up in despair, she turned pain into progress. And after many sleepless nights and discussing discussions with friends and family and physicians, uh, Kid in the Corner was born. She says, we simply could not stand idly by and watch this happen to anyone else. Nobody should feel alone mental illness is a physiological condition that needs open discussion awareness compassion and activism we need to as she says hashtag start, start the, the conversation, conversation. Uh, and so we are we are welcoming her to the show. Uh, we're going to have a great conversation with Francine and learn all about Kid in the Corner. Uh, I want to also let you know that uh, Mental Health Mondays is brought to you in cooperation with NAMI San Fernando Valley and Love and Beyond Reason. Uh, and we're also now streaming on City Streaming TV. Uh, it looks like this when you go to the website, just look up uh, City Streaming, uh, and we're going to have a great conversation. When we come back with Francine uh, Sumner, we're going to, as she says, hashtag start the conversation. Help someone who is struggling by supporting the National Alliance on Mental Illness and be a part of the NAMI effect. Hope starts with you. Hey guys, listen up. Learn something. As Dave promised, we're back and we are, are excited and honored to welcome our guest, Francine. Welcome yes, to Mental Health Monday. Yes. Hi, thanks for having me. <clears throat> Absolutely. Uh, so Francine, um, uh, we're going to use this part of the show to kind of talk about um, uh, the unfortunate events surrounding Zach, uh, the beautiful light that he was and is, and let you uh, kind of tell us about the just where uh, Kid in the Corner came from, the idea. Okay. Well, Kid in the Corner was born uh almost four years ago hmm. in uh, 2017 after I lost my youngest son, Zachary, 16 at that time, hmm. to suicide. He, you know, unlike a lot of typical um, people who've suffered mental illness and ultimately take their lives, really only suffered for a short time, about six months hmm. from, right, from when it first became really apparent. Wow. And, um, he had his first breakdown the night before his last final um, sophomore year. Mm. It was a night that was crazy in my house. Uh, my son wanted to know what was for dinner, and my daughter was getting ready to go on a trip, and her clothes were all over the bed, and the dog was barking, and Zach comes in, and he you know, throws himself on the bed, and he says, you know, I need help studying for my final right now. And, you know, everybody's like, hey, wait your turn. And mm -hmm. I said, Zachary, just, you know, wait for me. I'll be there in a minute. Let me just finish up with her. And he went to his room and slammed the door, sent me a very long text that said, don't bother. Mm. You don't care about me. Nobody cares about me. You don't love me the way you love Jacob and Gabrielle. Mm. Um, nothing you say will convince me. Otherwise, don't even bother. Wow. And I knew at that moment something wasn't right, obviously. Right. And uh, I went across the, <clears throat> the house and I knocked on his door and he wouldn't come out. I said, I'm going to sit right here and wait for you until you're ready for me. And about 45 minutes in, I heard a crash, and that was his first attempt at suicide. 
Wow. When he came out of his room that night, he was hysterically crying. And he said, you know, mom, I don't know why I care so much about other people, but nobody cares about me. Wow. You know, as a parent, hearing those words is just heartbreaking. Yeah, I can only imagine. Right? I mean, the first thing you want to say is, that's not true. Everybody cares about you. Right? Absolutely. That is the so first thing you say. Yeah, you defend, it. you defend your love is so deep. It's, it's inexplicable. Yeah, I'm thinking, where is this coming from? Yeah. And, but for him, it was real, right? Mm -hmm. And he'd been feeling off for who months. He, um, you know, had an incident at lunch with his friends who had been friends forever. And, um, you know, he was the butt of the jokes one day at lunch. And then he never went back and sat with them because he took it so personally. And mm -hmm. he'd been eating lunch by himself for months in the media center. And nobody noticed this new kid sitting there having lunch by himself. Yeah. One of his friends really looked after him. You know, maybe they thought he joined a club or had a girlfriend or mm -hmm. was eating lunch with other people. Nobody said anything. Yeah. And it was getting worse for him. And he never said anything to me. And so many things came out that night. And... You know, I realized sitting there that if this had been a physical illness, right, if he had broken his leg or um, was having appendicitis, I don't know exactly what to do. Diabetes exactly. or exactly. exactly. Right. But I had no idea. I honestly remember sitting there paralyzed thinking, I don't know who to call. I know not to call 911. Mm -hmm. I've heard not to call 911. But who do I call? So, yeah. so, Francine, I have a quick question. I just wanted to be for clar for my clarification. So that night that you sat outside of his door, that was an attempt, correct? But, but that was an attempt. Okay. It, it was not successful. It okay. Was an attempt. Mm -hmm. So that was your first sign of this is serious. Like, this is really, extremely serious. Yeah. This is, yeah. This is, this this is, is serious. Thing. Yeah. Right. And as a parent, I had no idea. Not only did I know where, not know where to go for resources, mm. but I didn't really know to go where to go for support. Right. Wow. They're leaving the next day to go to California to see their dad for the holidays. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. Do I let him go? Do I not let him? What yeah. do I do? Yeah. What are the best practices? What What do I do? And I let him go that he wanted to go. His siblings wanted him to go. And he left. And I sat on that bed and I looked at my phone thinking, I now have to find him a therapist or a psychiatrist or something. I don't even know what. And I don't even know where to start. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Those of us who've been on that journey and on that unfortunate path, um, uh, it, it's surprising when you realize that you need information and it's not handy in this day not, and age, it's not, not just, readily available. Not at just, all, right? <laughs> not even that it's not handy, it's worse. It's information that is so almost ethereal. Yeah, it's that, like a, a, a secret code well, that you is. have to have to Thank be able you. to find the information. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, people are posting on Facebook, you know, looking for recommendations for a pediatrician or a dentist or yeah. you never see somebody. Or a handyman. Looking. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what about a psychiatrist or a psychologist or a therapist? Exactly. Right? We're not talking about it, right? Because of stigma. There's right. so much stigma that surrounds it. And because of stigma, we never could really navigate the path the right way. Right. And right. in the end, he saw four providers in a six month period. Nobody mm. had him long enough to properly diagnose him. You know, when he came out, he was, did go wind up going into the hospital for a couple of weeks. And he thought, you know, I just want to get better. I just want my life back. And he came out of the hospital after two weeks thinking, you know, I'm going to do this. I'm feeling better. I'm stable. I want to get the help I need. Mm -hmm. And then two days later, he told me when he turned his phone on, he had no texts or emails or voicemails from friends or family or anybody. Wow. And he felt invisible again, like nobody mm. cared. And, you know, I had to show him my phone because my phone was blowing up. Yeah. Um, everybody wanted to know what they could do and how he was and checking mm -hmm. on him. But nobody said anything to him. Hmm. So it was crickets for him. And it just perpetuated that feeling of, yeah. I have something to be ashamed about. You know, of being alone talking. and having to deal with it alone. Yeah. Having to deal with it alone, right? Um, it was awful. And then he, um, he, he did go to a program, DBT, Dialectical Behavioral Therapy. We know it well. Yep. Right? 10 weeks long, three hours a night, three nights a week. Learned a lot about it. Um, learned tons of skills and tons of coping mechanisms. His whole thing was animals, you know, animals. And he was an entrepreneur. So he always had businesses, always had money. You know, we always said he had more money than any of us. Right. And the animals were like his thing. And so he created yeah. this business, Perfect Walker and Pet Sitting. And he decided that um, this was what, it, you know, this is where he wanted to spend his time, his energy, his efforts was with animals. Wow acts of service for animals, taking care of people's animals. 
He was making great money. He was giving back to animal rights uh, groups. I mean, he was he was starting to feel pretty good about creating that life worth living. So yeah, and, 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 he, and he was seemingly uh, quite the entrepreneur as well, which and is hold, awesome. And so hold, hold the thought right there because we want to we want to come. We want to continue this this conversation. We'll be right back on the other side of this break. OK. When Dave and Marla get together. You may not realize it, but these words, often used to describe someone with a mental health condition, can be very harmful. In a country where one in five people are affected by a mental health condition, it's time for all of us to step up and change the conversation. Just because someone's struggle isn't obvious on the outside doesn't mean they aren't hurting on the inside. We need to see the person, not the condition. Join with me, pledge to be stigma free. It's time for the Mental Health Minute with Marla and Dave. Oftentimes we focus on problem areas when we talk about mental health. For the next two weeks, we're gonna focus on ways to improve your mental health or your overall psychological well-being. Here are some activities that can help. Uh, number one, get plenty of sleep. Adults uh, should get as close to eight hours of sleep per night as they can. Although every individual's body differs, sleep is essential for learning and improving uh, daily productivity, Marlon. Uh, the second one is to stop to enjoy small aspects of the day. Enjoying the small things may seem cliche, but it's important to personal contentment. Try taking a walk on your break at work to appreciate the beauty in nature. Use a stress ball or some other stress reliever. The way that you handle stress directly affects your health. A common method to deal with stress is a stress ball. Just squeeze your frustrations away. <laughs> exercise, exercise, exercise. You all know that I'm a trainer, so I promote this 1000%. Um, it helps to contribute to your cardiovascular health. Improved cardiovascular health leads to better emotional stability and reduced anxiety. Try adding these activities to your daily routine. Keep a mental wellness journal and start tracking your improvement. This message, this mental health moment has been brought to you by Mental Health Mondays in partnership with NAMI San Fernando Valley and Loving Beyond Reason. David is a thinker. I never do anything without thinking about it first. Marla is a feeler. I basically wear my personality on my scene. But when Marla and Dave get together, it's like a match dancing with a firecracker. Fire uh, so Francine, uh, before we went to that break, you were telling us how um, it seemed like Zach was turning the corner and he had started his, his own business working with, uh, he loved animals and he had found a way to turn that into a business. Uh, please continue. Yes, so he did. He was feeling pretty good um, at that part of his life. Mm -hmm. When he finally saw uh, what was his fourth provider um, for various reasons, you know, she asked him how he was doing and he said, I, I think I'm doing really well in, um, in DBT and I, I love my business, but in school, I'm still having some anxiety. I still feel invisible. I still mm. feel like, you know, um, nobody's really asked me where I've been or welcomed me back or it's kind of like they, they look right through me and I have anxiety about going to school. Wow. And she said, you know, let's increase your medication um, a little bit mm -hmm. and see if that helps. And they, we did. We increased his medication a little bit and he wound up going into sort of a manic episode. Wow. Um, slowly, but he was really, that pendulum was swinging the other mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, I felt like he was sand. Um, kind of slipping through my fingers. Wow. I, I was home. He was out. He was home. I was out. Um, he all of a sudden walked in with a new haircut or a new shirt or it just didn't feel right. And yeah. he called crying uh, one night and he said, mom, I know it. I'm, I'm, I'm in a terrible manic episode and I can't stop um, buying clothes and my thoughts are racing and my dreams are vivid. And Will you take me back to the store to return some of the things that I bought because I don't need them? And this is really scaring me. Wow. And so we went the next day to his um, therapist and uh, his psychiatric provider. And she said, you know, I haven't had him long enough to know, but 
you know, maybe he needs to be on a mood stabilizer. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's what he needs, but let's just lower the medication and wait a couple weeks. And we didn't have a couple weeks because the night that he died, he had been taking care of a woman's cats. She was in Minnesota. She was away and had a neighbor watching the cats and the neighbor got sick and she found Zachary on nextdoor.com. He had rave (laughs) reviews and tons of followers. Mm. She contacted him and he said he'd be happy to take over. And he did. And so he took care of the cats for a good week. And the night that she was coming home um, during that day, he had locked one of the cats behind a door, um, not on purpose, but he, mm-hmm. he, had, he had to break that door um, to get the cat out, let mm-hmm. the cat out. And all day he had spent um, going back and forth to Home Depot. He had called a locksmith. He could not get that door fixed. And wow. um, he felt yeah, like he failed. Felt like he failed. And at about 8.30 at night, I texted him and said, hey, Zach, it's time to come home. He was taking PE in summer school. He also had had a cold. So it's, you know, it's time to come home. You, you've got school tomorrow. And he said, give me about a half an hour. Just want to make sure the house is perfect for her when she comes home. Half an hour later, he texted about eight of us and said, I love you all so much. Thank you for everything you've ever done for me. You've all been so good to me. And I was in my room. My daughter was in her room and we jumped up. Um, I called him. He answered the phone. I said, Zachary, what is going on? He said, mom, hang up. I don't want you to hear this. And by the time we got there, he was gone. Mm. He took his life with a loaded gun that he found in somebody's house. Wow. And yeah, it took his life in a very manic moment. Man, when, we are, we are, we are man, yeah, that's, at, at the same time, um, our hearts go out to you. Uh, we know it's a very difficult subject to talk about. For sure. Um, uh, but we want to kind of turn the corner to how that, how this such a painful moment in your life uh, out of it was born such a, such a wealth of, of, of help and, uh, and a sense of um, making sure that n- this doesn't happen to anyone else. Well, I have to ask you this for, for yeah. the sake, um, and I'm going to, I'm going to take it to a level that I know that is going to help somebody that's very close to me who uh, last year, similar i was i was kind of a support to her and Mm -hmm. she came home and her son he was 24 he she was the first person to find him he had hung himself at the front door and so i wanted to know what your support what were your steps um just right quick if you can just give me just a couple of things that just helped you bridge that gap well i think for me the first thing was um, I realized that that had happened and then i opened my eyes and my friends were standing there i don't really know how they got there wow I don't know who called the, I, I really don't remember, but from the very beginning, from the very moment, I had a support network hmm. and there was no stigma for me. Hmm. And I know that stigma played a huge part in Zachary's story. Yeah. And by shattering the stigma and starting conversations, we can change stories. We can change lives. Absolutely. Right. I mean, people reached out to me from all over the place with resources for um, suicide survivorship, for resources for my kids. There's not a lot of stuff for siblings who mm-hmm. lose yeah. uh, siblings. There were resources for them. Um, you know, I had a friend that walked in and said, you don't have to worry about anything. I will take care of the entire funeral. For wow. me, it was about support and community and not everybody is that lucky. Oh, no, right, wow. well, which is, that's why I'm even asking you because one of the things I think even for those who would like to support, we don't know whether this is a conversation to avoid, you know, how did you, manage no. is is something that the parents need to know absolutely and so we're going to have to go to a quick break again but when we come back um we're going to get keep talking about uh, and move into kid in the corner right. as well as uh, uh the penny pledge uh, which yes. is something else that you're involved with so <laughs> this is such a riveting uh story and uh, and testimony it is a testimony and we appreciate you sharing it with us we'll be right back All right, Marla, you know what the music means. It is not dancing time. It means that it's time for the poll question, the mental health Monday's poll question. Do you have the poll question handy? Of course, Dave. Okay, tell us. How long have we been doing this? Ask the question, please. Last week, we asked, what percentage of mental health disorders begin before the age of 14? 33%, 50%, or 68% were your choices. So we're going to ask our guest, Francine, to... Here's yes. here's your question. This is a poll okay. question. We have a real answer, but we're gonna let you give it first. 
Um, the question is, what percentage of mental health disorders do you believe begin before the age of 14? Is it 33%, 50%, or 68%? 68%. Okay. Well, uh, a lot of times when we talk about mental health, uh, usually the highest it number, is. unfortunately, is the right one. But this time it's 50 percent. 50 percent of mental health disorders begin <laughs> a, a, when children are before the age of 14. Uh, the poll question for next week is what percentage of adults in the U.S. experience a serious mental illness in any given year? Your options are 4 percent, 10 percent or 16 percent. Um, we want to get you guys to uh, uh, I have to keep reminding you that we need your support. Please go to the mental health uh, uh, Monday's, Monday's GoFundMe Go page. We got great guests coming up for you in the following weeks. We have uh, Layla Hathaway is going to be here. You guys, you definitely don't want to miss that. It'll be a two part uh, uh, episode episodes one and two uh, because we just can't fit it all in as usual. Uh, but, but we are on this week's poll question. Make sure that you vote. Absolutely. Everywhere our social media is, you can vote on these poll questions. We'll be right back. Okay. All so right, Francine, we hate to keep the, in the uh, corner. Uh, 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 stopping uh, such a riveting uh, story. And we really appreciate it. Again, I want to, I have to keep saying this. Um, in complete juxtaposition to what we usually find ourselves in. And that is a, a, a just a, a cavern of, of non-information, uh, someone willing to share and to start the conversation, as you always say, hashtag start the conversation so that we can not only just stop the stigma. I appreciate how you actually said that a little bit more forcefully shatter the stigma because we don't want anyone to experience right. the things that we've been through. <laughs> Uh, those of us who deal with this uh, from a family member's uh, perspective. So I'm going to let you continue. Okay. So, you know, from that story, we realized that um, stigma was the big player. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were a lot of things that happened, but stigma stopped Zachary from reaching out. It stopped mm -hmm. me from being able to know where to go. His friends never said anything to him. He felt alone. He felt shamed. It was awful. Mm -hmm. And we knew after this happened that we could not, we could not allow this to go on. And I spoke at his funeral about how he died. Wow. Um, I got up there and said, we, we have to talk about this. He died from mental illness. There's nothing to be ashamed mm -hmm. of. I'm not, I'm not ashamed of him. He was sick. He tried mm. everything he could. To Absolutely. Get better. Absolutely. I don't know if Kid in the Corner would have saved him. I know it would have made his life easier. Mm. And so we decided um, really after a couple of weeks that we needed to do something. And that's when Kid in the Corner was born. And we, we are, our corners, the cornerstone of Kid in the Corner is what's called the Penny Pledge. And so after Zachary died, we found thousands of pennies. He's a coin collector. Wow. And we drilled holes in the pennies to wear them to remind us how kind he was. He was extremely kind. Hmm. But it's become more than that. When we go into schools or anywhere we go, um, you know, organizations, businesses, any place we go and we talk, people take the pledge. And they pledge to reach out to the kid in the corner. Mm. Nice. They pledge to take care of their own mental health, know mm. that it's okay to not be okay, and a strength to ask for help. Yeah. And they pledge to be a safe and caring person that other people can talk to. Now, and when they take the pledge, do they get that same uh, penny necklace as well? Yep. They get pennies and they get this card that has the penny pledge on the front. Oh, man. I love that. And then community resources on the back because you're never alone. You're not. Absolutely. There's a teen lifeline that, that teens can text and talk to. And they're trained teens that are monitored by professionals. Wow. That, yeah. And they're so there, it's, a, it's, a, it's facilitated by teenagers as well. Right. And who, I who love knew? That. I wish Zachary would have had this. Right? Yeah. I wish I would have had it. Yeah. Right? And so, you know, I've spent the last few weeks virtually in classrooms going three-day uh, presentations of Kid in the Corner's Penny Pledge. We mm -hmm. take the first day and learn how to reach out to the Kid in the Corner right. and why. Why is it so important to treat mental health and physical health the same? And more than ever, especially during this pandemic, uh, it's extremely necessary for our suffering uh, kids who, have, who don't have the same uh, uh, connection to their friends because they're at home. They're not right. in school. They're not spending exactly. time with their friends. So man, that's amazing. Exactly. And we know, right, we've had colds before. You know, I say, mm -hmm. who's had a cold before? Who thinks they'll have a cold again? Mm -hmm. 
what do you need to have in the house before you have a cold, right? Tissues and, you know, all these different things, cold, you know, um, cough drops and mm -hmm. uh, chicken soup. And mm -hmm. you know, you're going to have a bad day and you're going to have a sad day again. And what are you going to do to make sure that you know how to take care of yourself? And what goes in your mental health medical kit? I That's love right. that. I love that. So there's lots and lots of things that we go through with these kids so that they understand what it means to take that pledge. They understand what it means to shatter the stigma and why it's I love so it. And at the end, they take the pledge um, and then they get to wear their pennies. Man, I love that. And what better way to honor uh, such right. a beautiful uh, young man, Zach, as to have this uh, man. I love the penny pledge. Uh, you also mentioned a great quote. Uh, and I, I don't want to leave before you get a chance to tell us about it. You say if it's mentionable, it's manageable. Tell us yeah. about that. Exactly. So that is our favorite Fred Rogers, right? Mr. Rogers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. His whole thing was, if it's mentionable, it's manageable. Mm. If we can talk about it, if we can start these conversations, we can work through it. There's mm -hmm. nothing we can't work through, but we have to be able to talk about it. Absolutely. So again, hashtag start the conversation and we will continue to keep that conversation going. Um, so how did you actually uh, get involved with NAMI or, or find NAMI? Well, I've known about NAMI for a long time. My mom yeah. worked for NAMI. Um, she was a national trainer for hmm. NAMI International. Wow. Yeah. And uh, she also worked at the state level for a while. And uh, one of the people that Zachary um, had been connected with um, through his, his animal advocacy um, also works for NAMI. Hmm. And she was very upset when he passed. Hmm. And the NAMI walk here, uh, the local one, was happening in a couple of months in October. Mm -hmm. And she asked if Kim the Corner wanted to man all the dog watering and treat oh, stations. Oh, nice. I love that. In honor of Zachary. And I so we did. That. All Kid in the Corner was there and we handed out penny pledge cards and resources. Awesome. And, um, yeah, we did it to honor Zach. So. Man, I love that, man. And so again, you guys, um, we, we can't uh, say this enough. Um, if you are suffering with any level of mental illness, if you just don't feel good, if you feel like the days are have more darkness than sunshine, please don't suffer alone. Reach out to somebody Absolutely. because we can guarantee you that as alone as you might feel from time to time, you have so much more love out there waiting uh, uh, to be received and people who just want to wrap their arms around you if you say something about it, if you speak up. Uh, so again, in, in Zach's uh, uh, honor, we want to make sure that the conversation is not only started, but that it never ends. That we continue the conversation. And, Absolutely. And that is the one thing that we promote here on Mental Health Monday um, from the beginning and as we will through the end of time for us is to remind everybody that you're not alone. It's that isolation that right. is the worst for all of us. So let's support each other by doing exactly what Francine was saying and starting the conversation. Our guest is Francine Sumner. Uh, she is the CEO and founder of Kid in the Corner. And as she's been telling us all about it, we'll be right back. Bad. What are you doing? You're worthless. Don't, don't trust them. They'll hurt you. You're worthless. It's pointless. When the pain of schizophrenia meets hope, everything can change. Help someone who is struggling by supporting the National Alliance on Mental Illness and be a part of the NAMI effect. Hope starts with you. It's raw, real, and unfiltered. Okay, Francine, this has been, man, we never have enough time to be totally honest and we wish we could, you know, double down on all of our guests and have them, you know, here sharing information. But we always like to have our guests leave us with a final message that's personal to you that will inspire others. So what what, what do you want to leave us with? What's the Francine nugget of the day? Um, I would say that never take for granted the power of kindness. Kindness is contagious. Whenever possible, be kind. It's always possible. Um, we are happy to come into any schools or any youth organizations or any place that could use help starting conversations and talking with kids. Um, you're never alone. We never want anybody to ever feel alone. And can you leave us with a, a website that can you say out loud? I know that it's listed, but yep. where can we find you? 
www.kidinthecorner.org. You can follow us on Facebook and you can follow us on Instagram. And you guys, we want you to take the penny pledge. I know as soon as I get home, I'm going to encourage everyone that I know to take the penny yeah, pledge. I, I, I know I want to take the penny pledge myself and I'm going to. I don't know. I, I'm a little older than a teenager, but. <laughs> yeah, you can I, go to the website and there's a, um, a part that says penny pledge. If you go there and you fill it out, I'll, we'll send you a penny. Oh, and because man, David I is so that. old, I'll pound his pennies down to be a little bit bigger, <laughs> so they'll they'll match him. Francine, uh, uh, your testimony is it's amazing. amazing. Uh, we love the fact that you are uh, uh, one of the warriors in this fight to not just stop the stigma but shatter the stigma and to start this conversation. And we're with you. Thanks we appreciate for you. We're honored that you chose to spend some time with us today. Uh, you guys, as usual, great content, great information. Great guest. Thank you, Francine. Uh, Kid in the Corner, make sure you go and register for that penny pledge. We'll see you guys next week. Thank you guys so much.